certainly storing your own grain opens up your marketing opportunities as well. Um, particularly the basis, you know, you can kind of determine uh, when, when you want to take the basis uh, and working with your, your local um, places, whether it's ethanol, livestock, uh, or just the elevator to, to, to be able to sell your grain. The one thing that it does is give you an opportunity to go to different markets. Uh, right now, there's a lot of uh, elevators and things filling up with wet corn. Sometimes your opportunities to go to some other markets, they don't take wet corn. So the on-farm storage is really the only thing that you have out there available to you so you can capture some of those other markets, which gives you a better ROI on the investment of your crop. On average, the farms are getting larger, so we need to be able to do this all in a, at a faster pace too. So um, everything getting bigger with the same, or in a lot of cases, less people to do the work uh, requires that we've got to be able to use technology to replace some labor if we're not able to get it. We want to make that as efficient as possible. That on-farm storage with our receiving pits and, and receiving elevators um, give you that opportunity to keep those machines moving even after hours when other elevators and things are closed. And then our dryers allow you to dry that grain uh, as you're bringing it in wet and, and getting it in storage so you can capture those ROIs. So you can capture some of those markets and some of that uh, uh, premium pricing uh, if you can keep that grain on your farm um, and then deliver it on off season, right? You know, a lot of times our peak months are gonna be in the summer months where we capture the best uh, bang for the buck. So if we can hold it till then and capture some of that, you're, you're gonna have a better ROI on that crop that you put in the ground. Talking to people that have done it before, I, I really encourage, talk to your neighbors, talk to other people in the industry, your peers, because um, particularly, you know, farmers to farmers, they usually will talk pretty openly about what they really like and what they don't like and what they would do better. And you can't replace that kind of experience with almost no matter who you're talking to. And everybody has their own unique perspective about it. So dealers are an excellent resource, but your neighbors that have done recent projects, those are huge and very important resources. Um, and, and be willing to talk to, to, you know, to the next neighbor that talks to you about it as well, because we've got to keep it going and, and there's fewer and fewer people to do it all the time. I actually do some farming myself and, and uh, it's, it kind of gets me away from, from uh, you know, the, the day to day, gives me something a little bit different to, to look at, but uh, it's very joyful to be out in nature and to see, and to see what, uh, what the God created in, in our planet and be able to produce a crop that uh, was also gifted to us and uh, keep these yields increasing as technology and things improve on the farm and see the automation and technology that comes along with it all. 2023, I guess we hope, is getting back to a little more of a normal cycle. Um, the last few years, whether it was COVID or supply chain issues maybe caused by that or, or, or whatever is driving it, it, has changed a lot of patterns and it meant people had to try to plan way far out ahead in order just to get equipment. And, and we're seeing in 2023, I think uh, the lead times are a little shorter and I think that's gonna definitely help that part. It feels like 2023 is getting closer to a more normal cycle and I think that'll be a big benefit for all of us.